Once you finally get your hands on your data, you're probably eager to show it in a meaningful way. So what is a run chart and why do we obsess over them in process improvement? A run chart at a glance is a simple line chart that shows you your data over time. We like to use these in process improvement because it highlights the improvement journey your project and team have been through in a digestible way. Just like we use the A3 to tell a story of your project, the run chart tells the story of your data. It shows where the process was, where it is now, and where we're trying to go. In this tutorial video, we'll build one together. So, fun fact, one of my most favorite hobbies in the world is to play video games. I know, this professional looking person who's supposedly an expert on process improvement is also a huge nerd, wild, right? I've played all sorts of types of games. One of my all time favorites is Overwatch. There are several different game modes, but we often play Capture the Flag. In this game mode, you have two teams who, like in real Capture the Flag, attempt to stop Team A from taking Team B's flag back to Team A's base. The characters use special skills and powers to stop each other. The character that I play is Wrecking Ball because he's very defensive and also an adorable robot hamster. Wrecking Ball can whack into stuff and swing around and push people away from the objective, or my personal favorite, boop people off the map. My friends have been gaming seriously a lot longer than I have, and I am just sick of being at the bottom of the leaderboard. So to improve my performance, I've been focusing on increasing my damage that I wreak upon my unassuming enemies. Let's do this by utilizing a run chart. Step one, set up your spreadsheet. You'll want to title four columns, date, data, average, and target. Step two, list your dates that will become the horizontal axis on your run chart. You'll list your dates in this column. This could be daily, weekly, hourly, whatever you decide it to be. We do recommend picking a metric that you can measure as often as possible in order to have the most data points and to best tell your improvement story. So I'll use my average damage done per 10 minute match as my primary measure. Here I have included the last several weeks of data and going forward to where my goal end date occurs. Excel is pretty smart and can recognize patterns in cells. After you enter at least two dates in a column, you can highlight those cells, hover over the bottom right hand corner of the cell range and a small black cross should appear. You can click and drag that little cross down and you'll notice that Excel will fill in the values for you. Step three, input your data. In this column, you'll input the data you've gathered regarding the current performance of your process next to the corresponding date. The beautiful thing about this is once you've created your chart, all you'll have to do is fill in these cells as you get more data and the chart will update automatically. Step four, calculate your current mean. Mean is the same thing as average. In this column, you're listing repeatedly the mean or average of this grouping of your performance data points. The number of times listed matches the number of data points included in the average. For a baseline, you'll want about eight points of data. Depending on the cadence, this may be easier to show than metrics measured less frequently. In order to calculate your average, highlight the cells and glance to the bottom right of your screen. Excel has brilliantly calculated the average count and sum for you. You can also use the Excel function equals average of a range to calculate this if you don't already have a historical baseline and you want to get fancy with your formulas. But if you're brand new to Excel, we recommend asking your designated data person or improvement professional to help you set this up. In this example, my sorry baseline average is 221 damage points per match. For comparison, my husband usually gets around 2000 damage points per match. Did I mention that I stink? Something else to note, we want to encourage you to think about what is the best measure to utilize for your baseline and metric. Run charts can be great for showing all types of measures, including but not limited to decimals, percentages, and numbers. In improvement, there's a tendency to always jump to using an average, but we really care about using a measure of central tendency of your process. This could be an average, a median, or even a standard deviation. Discuss this with your team and think about what measure would be the most useful for your run chart. Don't feel restrained, the sky is the limit. One question we get a lot is why not just use a trend line over time instead of a baseline average and final average? Improvement is about showing shifts in data. The trend line view may tell your story well, but we wanna highlight that the process clearly has shifted to a new mean statistically, i.e. seven points or more in a row above or below the mean. If you use a trend line over time, you're actually assuming that the process is changing gradually. Often in improvement, the process may be stable, then unstable, as interventions are being tested and will later stabilize once the process has been improved. For comparison, spoiler alert, here's what the run chart will look like when completed, and here's what a trend line would show. 
Not as cool of a story, right? Step five, input your target. This is up to you and your team, but most teams start inputting their target on the date that they started the project and then repeat it until their goal end date. Unfortunately, Excel cannot read minds. One of the biggest issues I see with people who struggle with Excel is a reference error. Usually, this means that Excel doesn't recognize or understand the format of the data that you've put into the cell. Please double check and triple check that the data you're putting into the spreadsheet is formatted appropriately by right-clicking on a range or cell and selecting Format Cells. Once you're in the Format dialog box, you can check that the data is formatted as a number, percentage, and not general or text. Similarly, when we make the chart, make sure your axes are formatted properly as well. Right-click and format the axes to show the data properly. For example, use decimal points for percentages, not whole numbers. Here's an image on the version of Excel that I have, but your Format Axes dialog box might look very different. In my run chart, I'm going to choose an arbitrary target of 1,000 damage per match, which definitely would be a big improvement and looks a little daunting. Step six, select the four columns where you have input information. Include the titles in your section. Don't select the entire rows and columns, just the area of the spreadsheet where the data has been inputted. Step seven, insert a run chart. This is where it gets a little tricky and another potential sticking point for Excel headaches. As there are multiple versions of Microsoft Excel, but after you have selected your data, go to the ribbon and find a button that allows you to insert a line chart. Here's an example on a Windows version of Excel. Step eight, understand the visuals. In this example, you can see that the blue line is the performance data. The orange line shows my current average and the gray line shows the target. So according to this run chart, I've got a 221 average data. My goal is a laughable 1000 damage. And I've seen a decent amount of variation in my performance and I have until January 1 to meet my goal. You can also see here when I add in numbers to the data column that the chart updates automatically. One note, depending on your data set, you may wanna ask your local improvement professional about a cumulative run chart. Cumulative run charts are particularly helpful when your process has a really low number of occurrences. In the healthcare world, this could be a low patient population or maybe a rare procedure or emergencies. The reason these charts are usually more helpful is because the number of occurrences are so low, that the variation in your measure may be incredibly high. The cumulative chart helps reduce some of the noise that may distract from the improvement. Here's an image of what a cumulative chart looks like with a different data set. This type of run chart is just another way of telling a story of improvement. The reason this team used a cumulative run chart is because the variation of their data was really high, and it was actually unclear that an improvement was made in a typical run chart. You can see that the slope of the line actually shifted here. Step nine, format the chart as desired. To format your chart, change colors, line styles, anything you want. Simply right click on the chart element you wish to format, click format in the pop-up box and personalize as needed. Be careful with changes such as 3D, shadows and other flashy effects. These can be distracting and make the chart harder to understand. Make sure you tell the tale, title, axis, line, expound. What this means is that your chart format is almost as important as the data in it. Include the title, axes, lines, legends, etc., and then expound on that to tell the story. We also suggest you annotate your run chart as things change. For example, when interventions are started, annotate that on the chart so that way people can see when improvements are made. Annotation is most easily done by adding call-out style shapes and lining them up to the date of your intervention or process change. I typically like to do my annotation in PowerPoint because it's easier to maneuver the shapes in that medium. Yes, the wrecking balls are a bit much and maybe a little too flashy. I'd now like to introduce my colleague, Daniel Ramberger, to give us some perspective on utilizing run charts in their improvement work. So when we are presenting to stakeholders or project team members, it's really important to be able to use the run chart because just like the A3 tells the story of your project, your run chart tells the story of your data. And so being able to see your progression over time really sells the project or it will tell you where you have room for improvement. And so it's a visual representation of where you're at. There are people within healthcare that find run charts, Excel very daunting. Um, and so as you are looking to build that, once you kind of get a feel for how to build it, you can watch simple tutorial videos online and it's not rocket science. It's something that you can figure out and once you do it once or twice, you can feel comfortable with it. You can make your template and then reuse it for the future. If you have further questions about this or want to do more with your run chart, just Google it. Simply type the question you have in a Google search 
and you'll be surprised the number of resources out there. Let's review what we've learned in this video. Don't share a graph, share a story and use a graph. And when you do share it, tell the tale. Title, access, lines, and expound. You should now feel comfortable building a run chart from scratch in Excel. But as always, if you get stuck, feel comfortable asking your data person or designated improvement professional for help. Because we have no idea which version of Excel you're using, we can't get into all of the fun tips and tricks, though hopefully we've provided some basic ones to make your lives a little easier. But simply Googling what you're trying to do usually will allow you to find the answers you're looking for. Excel headaches are the worst, but usually easily remedied. Lastly, one thing people don't realize is once you've made one of these run charts, you'll actually have built yourself a run chart template. Save it, change the data, the dates, anytime you need to create a new run chart. Now that you've set up your run chart, you should be ready to watch it morph and change as you improve your process. Exciting, huh? Maybe you're feeling inspired to get out there and improve your gaming performance as well. Gamertag Das Waffle signing off.